You're going to have to pardon my uh, scanner audio in the background. It's currently running a radio reference feed, which you can view or view, listen to by going to broadcastify.com and going to Alexander County in Illinois and clicking the Alexander County EMS 911 Sheriff. I forget what exactly my title is, but it's the only radio feed in Alexander County, Illinois. So, um, and Alexander County is, of course, the most southern county in the state of Illinois, wedged right between uh, Missouri and Kentucky, so it's rather easy, easy to find. This is the repeater. The repeater you're looking at is the one that I've worked up to uh, serve as the family GMRS repeater. And of course, it's a UHF repeater. It's a Midland 924, I believe. It's, 70. it's the 7924B. So it's the Midland LMR Land Mobile Radio Base Station slash Repeater Desktop Two-Way FM Radio. This is the service manual. Mine is the 7924B, which is the 25 watt model. The 7905B is the 5 watt model. What differentiates them is a bolt-on power amplifier section in the rear end. If you can see on the back of this picture, kind of see the heat sinks back there well if it was the 905 B the heat sinks on the left of the rear of the chassis there would not be there it would be a blank plate you would only see the power supply heat sinks to your right and that's what mine has so it's the 97924 B duplexers that are currently on it are Motorola T1504 A's rack mount four cavity duplexers band pass band receive band reject the controller that you can see in the gray box with the clear window on the front is a custom built controller from a uh, ideomatic 2 See if I can find the In order to give credit where credit is due, main part of the controller. N0XAS Ideomatic 2 Morse code that gives me the Morse code ID and the courtesy beep. Then, to meet the FCC remote shutdown requirement, because this is a desktop repeater meant to have, a, I guess, a dispatcher sitting in front of it all the time, you can just reach over and hit the power button in that case. Since this is going to be locked in a cabinet behind a barbed wire fence at a repeater site, it requires a remote shutdown capability. You can kind of see the green light glowing there. That's the DTMF relay. That's the ideomatic indicator, of course, programming port. This whole cover just slides off, so it's very easy to program. The DTMF relay board decoder board is a D. Schmidt Technologies DTMF Relay Revision C. I don't know if you can see that. There's a picture of it. Of course I'm not going to actuate the DTMF Relay in this video. 
uh, I guess just for a security through obscurity feature. If you don't hear the DTMF tones, you can't reverse engineer and figure out what they are. Yeah, you could come around here and figure it out, but that requires you coming to the middle of nowhere. Whereas, if I did it on the video, then somebody would decode it and it would be plastered over all the radio reference boards and everything else, and I just don't want that to happen. I want to remain in control of my repeater. It is carrier squelch. It has no CTCSS tone. So, without the remote shutdown capability, it's a little vulnerable. Uh, the local UHF repeater operates carrier squelch and really doesn't have much of a problem with it. So, thank goodness in this area we don't have too many problems with people doing foolish things. So. CTCSS is not really a requirement, plus if you don't use it, it allows a wider variety of radios and less programming hassle, and yada yada yada. Kind of works out well. This is a crystal controlled radio. I got crystals from International Crystal Manufacturing in Lee, Oklahoma. I don't know if you can read that or not. Just Google them. This repeater's on a frequency of 462.625 or the fourth GMRS repeater pair. number 12 in most of the family radios either listed as just channel 12 or if it has an alphanumeric display it will be GMRS R4 R-4 the radios are programmed with all GMRS simplex and repeater pairs for the family so that they are always compatible no matter if I need to shift frequency or anything, all they have to do is change channel. Don't have to reprogram the radios ready to go. In fact, I even think I have a CTCSS tone programmed in most of them on transmit only, just in case. This has the ability to, I believe, decode a CTCSS tone. I don't quite have the equipment to set that up. It requires a frequency counter. Um, in theory, I could do it with the oscilloscope, although it wouldn't really be as precise as I need it to be. Um, I do have a second pair of crystals installed in these for 650. However, if I did need to change up a channel, I would have to retune the duplexers. The hope is, is to have a second pair of duplexers eventually pre-tuned, so all I have to do is go swap out the duplexers, recable it in, flip the channel switch, and be good to go. Not have to muck about the radio. Luckily, when I received this repeater, it was already tuned to uh, 460 some odd, so I didn't really have to. Uh, didn't really require any uh, retuning, so that's good. Of course, tune the duplexers. Uh, Used a signal generator and a old Thetacom spectrum analyzer to do that. Good old cheap old equipment. Seems to work very well. well this video is getting a little long, going on towards 10 minutes. So we'll just key the repeater here and do its thing, and then that will be the end of the video. need to set that courtesy beep out a little longer. Some radios don't like it being that close in.
That radio obviously doesn't like being in the RF environment directly next to the repeater, so. There you have it. I hope you have a good one. Stay tuned for more as I'm going to, like I said, take videos of everything I think will be interesting. So, have a good one once again.